At the beginning of the movie, a band of ruthless animal smugglers sneak into a zoo under the cloak of night. They skillfully abduct a young lion cub and quickly transport it to a plane waiting to take them to a secret location. The main character of the film is introduced as Elma, a 25-year-old woman who aspires to be a concert pianist and has a deep love for animals. On impulse, Elma decides to vacation on a tranquil island, which she soon learns was owned by her late grandfather. She was adopted by him as a child, held him in great esteem, and lovingly referred to him as Grandpa. After his death, she inherits this isolated haven. Upon her arrival, she is warmly welcomed by Uncle Joe, the caretaker of the island. Elma is taken to a delightful hut on the property that provides all the comforts and tranquility she needs for a peaceful retreat. That evening, while watching her grandfather's old videos, Elma becomes tearfully nostalgic. In a touching video, her grandfather talks about a wolf named Snow, who mysteriously showed up on the island years ago and became a beloved friend. He encourages Elma to find Snow, assuring her that the wolf would be a wonderful companion. Meanwhile, the plane carrying the abducted lion cub experiences severe turbulence and crashes on the island. Overwhelmed yet curious, Elma sets out from her house to explore, but due to the island's vastness, she finds nothing. The next morning, two individuals, Charles and Ellie, arrive with plans to capture Snow. They explain that they run a wolf park and are keen to include the intelligent wolf in their collection. Despite their attempts, Snow smartly dodges capture and flees. Snow swims to another part of the island, where she unexpectedly meets Elma. Recalling her grandfather's remarks about Snow's gentle nature, Elma overcomes her initial fear and helps Snow escape from the remnants of a trap. Soon after, Elma discovers the airplane crash site. Remarkably, the lion cub has survived, cushioned by a bird's nest during the crash. Just then, the mother bird accidentally drops the cub, which lands safely in Elma's arms. Touched by the cub's terrified state, Elma decides to adopt him. In a heartwarming twist of events, Snow also arrives at Elma's home, accompanied by her own pack. Elma, Snow, the lion cub, and the wolf cub forged a surprising yet heartfelt connection, offering both adventure and a newfound sense of family on the serene island. Elma was taken aback to find herself cohabiting with three wild creatures. Concerned about her well-being, she quickly reached out to her Uncle Joe, who urged her to alert the local authorities about the potential risks. He also mentioned that a team of park rangers would soon come to investigate a lion sighting in the vicinity. When the rangers arrived at Elma's home by boat, she, fearing the often cruel treatment animals endure in captivity, chose to safeguard her newfound friends. She deceived the rangers by asserting she had seen no wildlife around. After they left, she was comforted to see Snow, one of the animals, assisting in feeding both her cub and the lion lightening the load of managing their diets. As time progressed, the relationship between the two cubs strengthened, and Elma's love for them deepened. She named the wolf Jack and the lion Dreamer. Unknown to Uncle Joe, the animals remained with Elma on the island. Over the months, Elma began taking the now larger cubs on evening strolls to her favorite spot, a place she frequently visited with her grandfather. On a pivotal day, while Elma was auditioning at a music label, the rangers came back and seized Snow, taking her away. Meanwhile, Elma received exciting news that she had been chosen for the job. However, her happiness quickly turned to distress when she returned home to find chaos. A consequence of the animal's intense hunger, with Snow no longer there and no one else to assist, Elma was compelled to feed the cubs herself. This new responsibility made it unfeasible for her to commit to her new job leading her to resign reluctantly. The following morning, Uncle Joe came to check on Elma and was enraged to find the animals still present. He immediately insisted they be sent to a zoo. Elma implored her uncle, explaining that it was her grandfather's desire for her to live in harmony with nature. She also expressed her concerns about the suffering the cubs would face if sent to a zoo. Touched by her dedication and honesty, Uncle Joe was convinced to allow the animals to stay. Thus, Elma continued to honor her grandfather's legacy, 
nurturing a harmonious relationship with nature and her animal companions. On the serene island, Alma has forged a profound and affectionate relationship with Jack and Dreamer. She wholeheartedly embraces her island life, devoting a significant amount of time to nurturing her cubs and ensuring their well-being. Although Alma no longer works and rarely has the opportunity to play the piano, her joy is immeasurable. She treasures the connection she has built with her new animal companions, who return her affection in kind. As the seasons pass, the cubs mature into adults. Uncle Joe, always vigilant, continues to support Alma by supplying meat and essentials from the city for the animals. Despite his help, he remains wary of the now fully grown animals and often voices his concerns to Alma about the potential risks they pose. Nonetheless, Alma is resolute in her decision to spend her life on the island, tending to her cherished animals. One peaceful day, a mother and her daughter near the island in a boat, captivated by the colorful flowers on the shore, the daughter begs her mother to visit the island. At that moment, Jack, now an adult cub, notices the newcomers in, driven by curiosity, starts to move toward them. Alma, perceiving the possible danger, rushes to intercept Jack but tragically slips and falls, hitting her head on a rock which renders her unconscious. Oblivious to the incident, the mother and daughter depart the island without encountering the animals. As evening approaches, Jack and Dreamer, the other adult cub, discover Alma lying motionless. They howl into the twilight, a mournful cry for help. Yet no one arrives. They remain beside Alma throughout the night, keeping her warm. The next morning, after several failed attempts to rouse Alma, Uncle Joe senses something is wrong and rushes to the island. Initially, he suspects the animals have harmed Alma, leading him to hastily call animal control. However, upon discovering Alma unconscious but unscathed, with the animals loyally by her side, he regrets his premature judgment. At the hospital later, the doctor tells Uncle Joe that the warmth provided by the animals likely prevented Alma from succumbing to hypothermia. Meanwhile, animal control, which had temporarily taken Jack into custody, introduces him to Ellie and Charles. After a thorough examination, they confirm that Jack's sequence of events underscores the profound relationship between Alma and her animal companions. A bond that ultimately becomes critical to their survival. It also challenges established beliefs about the inherent nature of wild animals and their ability to demonstrate affection and loyalty. In the story, a lion named Dreamer, one of Snow's offspring, finds himself in a vulnerable position after being transferred to a zoo operated by a man named Alan and his compassionate son. Raja, unlike his father, who is notoriously cruel to animals, Raja quickly forms a caring relationship with Dreamer. Raja tries to soothe the lion with frequent visits, but Dreamer struggles under harsh conditions. Being heavily sedated and compelled to partake in circus acts, a drastic shift from his tranquil life on the island, leading to a marked decline in his health. Elsewhere, Alma regains consciousness and is deeply concerned about her animal friends. She finds solace when Uncle Joe assures her of their safety. Though somewhat reassured, she remains eager to see them. After being discharged, she goes directly to animal control only to learn that her wolf, Jack, has been moved to a wolf park and that Dreamer is enduring a cruel circus life. Distressed, Alma confronts the officers, but Joe manages to calm her, and they depart. She later reaches out to Ellie, who informs her that Jack is flourishing in the park, having formed numerous friendships and receiving excellent care. While this news hardens Alma, her worry for Dreamer continues. In her determination to find Dreamer, Alma spends weeks visiting every circus in the city, yet without success. Meanwhile, Alan's circus profits immensely from Dreamer's performances, where the lion has become a star attraction. Known as, Star Lion, destiny plays its hand when Dreamer's circus travels close to the wolf park where Jack resides. Recognizing his friend, Jack ingeniously escapes and later, when Ellie arrives to check on him, she is astounded by his cleverness. Realizing he is on a mission, Jack eventually finds Dreamer and cleverly liberates him from his cage. Their reunion is jubilant as the two friends, separated for months, joyfully frolic and relish their regained freedom. In a fit of rage, 
Alan grabs his tranquilizer gun, determined to recapture the lion. Despite Raja's earnest pleas to reconsider and leave the defenseless animal alone, Alan, fueled by anger, sets out to track down the lion. Despite his own motivations and ignoring his son's worries, Raja feels compelled to join his father on their dangerous quest. At the same time, Ellie discovers from a friend that Jack, who had been held captive, has managed to escape in a bid to reunite with his friend. Leon the Lion with both animals now on the loose, the city is thrown into a state of panic, leading to a heightened state of alert among the residents. That evening, Ellie goes to the island to inform Alma about the recent developments. She tells Alma that the animals have escaped and that hunters and law enforcement are now tracking them down. Alma listens intently as Ellie shares that although they had equipped Jack with a tracking device, its weak signal makes it difficult to determine their precise location. The last reported sighting of the animals was near a forest. As darkness envelops the city, Ellie and Alma decide to look for Jack and Leon themselves. Meanwhile, the animals wander through the city, compelling residents to remain indoors. Their search for food even leads them into a department store, causing the police to advise residents to defend themselves if needed. Later, the animals make their way back to the forest where they come across Alan and Raja. The unscrupulous circus owner tries to shoot Leon, but Jack steps in and is hit by the tranquilizer dart intended for the lion. Jack collapses, leaving Raja distressed and worried. Acting swiftly, Raja rushes to Jack's side, removes the dart and the tracking device, and gives him a pill to counteract the effects of the tranquilizer. After a while, Jack starts to recover, and the father and son duo find respite at a nearby bar. There, they encounter Ellie and Alma, who had tracked the signal from the removed device. Alan, oblivious to the device's removal, feigns ignorance and dismisses them. Seizing an opportunity, Raja excuses himself pretending to need a restroom break and confides in Ellie and Alma, leading them to the forest where they finally find Leon. Together, they track the lion to a shed where they find Jack, now fully conscious thanks to Raja's quick actions. As they regroup, the police arrive at the scene, forcing them to make urgent decisions to ensure the safety of both the animals and the people involved. Alma leads the animals along a hidden pathway known only to her, with the only obstacle being a narrow stream that separates them from her secluded island. This island serves as a sanctuary, located beyond the grasp of the authorities. The island offers a sanctuary, and Alma is eager to get there. Yet, Without access to a boat, the group is faced with the formidable challenge of swimming across. Jack, the wolf, dives into the water energetically without any hesitation. Dreamer, however, hesitates at the edge, overwhelmed by his fear of swimming. Alma tries to gently persuade him to enter the water. But Dreamer, frozen by his phobia, turns away and vanishes into the thick forest. Despite feeling distressed, Alma and Jack continue their swim towards the island. As they approach their destination, the sound of a gunshot pierces the air, marking what seems to be a fatal outcome for Dreamer. Alma arrives at the island, her grief mixing with the waters of the lake. But then, to everyone's amazement, Dreamer appears from the edge of the jungle. He had cleverly circled back to deceive the police who were chasing them and had not been harmed. His return boosts the morale of the group and reunites their small family. In the closing scene, Alma hosts a piano concert on the island. The audience, having arrived by boat, experiences a moving performance. Dreamer and Jack, now integral members of the group, watch with satisfaction. The film ends with Alma recounting the poignant story of her animal friends to the audience. Leaving everyone touched and joyful. This story of courage, family and survival leaves a lasting impression, ensuring that the viewers take a piece of this enchanting island home with them. After listening to this tale, what are your impressions? We'd love to hear from you in the comments section below, your insights are valuable to us. Now, we have another engaging story, let's proceed to the next one. The excitement of little Emma was evident as she neared the lion exhibit at the zoo, her eyes shone with eagerness, and as she and her mother, Sarah, approached the high fence of the lion's habitat. Emma pressed eagerly against the bars for a better view, Sarah, her mother. 
took out her phone to record the precious scene, as she did. A deep growl resonated through the air, heightening Emma's excitement. She turned to see three majestic lions enjoying the warmth of the sun, among them was a large male with a full mane. While the two sleek females groomed each other peacefully, Emma, utterly enchanted, cautiously extended her hand through the bars towards the male lion, Emmy, be careful, don't get too close, Sarah warned, yet she kept recording. Aware of her daughter's fascination with these large felines, to their astonishment, the male lion raised his head at Emma's gentle waving, it appeared he was gazing directly at her, he emitted a long, deep rumble, he's talking to me, mommy, I think he wants me to come closer, Emma shouted with joy, pushing against the fence bars, Sarah's heart raced, yet she didn't want to disrupt this enchanting experience, okay, sweetheart, but stay at a safe distance, she responded. Emma nodded and moved as close as she could without extending her limbs through the bars. She watched the male lion intently, who matched her gaze with an intense interest. For a few moments, a unique connection seemed to form between the child and the majestic lion, as if they were communicating silently. Sarah was amazed as her brave daughter appeared to share a deep, mysterious bond with the lion. The lion maintained eye contact with Emma. Making rumbling sounds that resembled a friendly greeting, Emma mimicked the sounds back, creating soft growls of her own. The grand beast cocked his head, seemingly intrigued by the small human echoing lion noises. Captivated, Sarah continued to film, her camera capturing this extraordinary interaction. It seemed as though an unmistakable bond had formed between her daughter and the powerful lion, a bond that transcended species fostered by a profound mutual understanding, however. Just five seconds later, the tranquility was shattered by a loud roar, Sarah and Emma gasped as a huge male lion charged through, on the other side of the enclosure's boundary, the grass was greener, here, a lion, more formidable and aggressive than the previous one, stood with a thicker mane and robust muscles, his massive teeth were exposed as he halted mere feet away punctuating an unforgettable encounter with a dramatic finish, across the fence at the zoo. A fierce alpha male lion unleashed a powerful roar, the other lions dispersed in fright, quickly vacating the area, amid the turmoil, Sarah's heart pounded as she swiftly pulled her daughter Emma's arm back through the bars, clutching her tightly to her chest in a protective hold, the new alpha male, asserting his dominance, approached with measured, stalking strides his lips curling into a fearsome snarl, Emma, gripped by terror, buried her face in her mother's shirt, it's okay, it's okay. Sarah murmured shakily, feeling the urge to snatch her daughter and flee, however, she knew that any sudden movement might trigger the menacing lion, meanwhile, her phone's camera continued to capture the tense situation, just as the Alpha seemed poised to charge at the fence, Emma let out a soft whimper that astonishingly resembled the roar of a lion. To the surprise of all present, the large Alpha halted, his head cocking in puzzlement at the tiny human cub emitting lion-like sounds. Emma let out another small roar whimper, and miraculously, the imposing creature seemed to calm down. He settled onto his stomach a short distance away on the opposite side of the fence, his gaze fixed on them, nobody moved, Sarah and Emma remained still, observing as the lion's demeanor transitioned from hostile to inquisitive and serene, almost contemplative, as Emma continued with her quiet noises, slowly, Sarah led her daughter back from the fence, her phone still recording every moment. The Alpha watched them tranquility at times responding with softer grumbles to Emma's sounds. Once they were at a safer distance, a shocked zookeeper approached quickly. Are you two all right? That could have been very dangerous, he said urgently. Sarah, overwhelmed and speechless, merely turned her phone towards the zookeeper, showing him the video where Emma's timid roars had remarkably calmed the formidable predator. The zookeeper's eyes widened as he watched. Her talents were particularly attuned to feline species, showcasing an exceptional level of communication with big cats. The footage of Emma calming the aggressive male lion had become the talk of the facility, remarked upon as an extraordinary event. I've never seen anything like that before. That male was clearly displaying territorial aggression, ready to confront any intruder.
yet your little girl managed to soothe him, he commented. Sarah glanced at Emma, who was softly sobbing by now. On the other side of the barrier, the lion lay down serenely, appearing to watch over her as if he were her protector. It was among the most astonishing occurrences any of them had ever seen. Emma wiped her nose and looked again at the alpha male who emitted a low growl, seemingly in recognition of her presence. A slight smile formed on Emma's face, signaling her realization that this was merely the beginning of an extraordinary journey. Emma's rare gift was just starting to manifest. Unveiling her unprecedented ability to connect with the animal kingdom in ways humans had never envisioned, the zoo staff, having heard of her incredible encounter, were keen to delve deeper into her abilities, initially hesitant to display her skills to the amazed experts, Emma eventually found comfort as the zoo staff ensured safe interaction sessions behind the barriers of the enclosure, impressively, Emma began to accurately replicate the lion's various sounds, roars, chuffs, and purrs, with astonishing precision, the lions reacted to her as if engaging in conversation with a familiar being. Dr. Marsha Kendall, the zoo's chief animal behaviorist, was fascinated by the display. I've never seen such a profound connection between different species, she noted, convinced of the importance of Emma's ability. Dr. Kendall led a thorough investigation involving Emma's entire family. They conducted neurological scans genetic testing, and detailed analyses. Much to her mother Sarah's comfort, confirming Emma was in perfect health and alleviating any worries about potential disorders, Dr. Kendall theorized that Emma might have a unique neurological imprinting that cross-wired her brain's vocal and auditory centers, enabling her to understand and mimic animal sounds fluently. As more specialists came on board, they broadened the scope of experiments to assess Emma's capabilities with other animals, including primates, dogs, and marine creatures, yet, it seemed her connection was particularly strong with members of the cat family, demonstrating a remarkable level of interspecies communication. Emma's unique gift was finely tuned to resonate with large felines, a couple of days following the initial event. Dr. Kendall, accompanied by several zookeepers, assisted Emma in entering the lion cub's enclosure to test the theory. A lion cub rested beside a log, serene and at ease. With a subtle nod from the experts, Emma moved closer to the cub. As she approached, she made a gentle chuffing sound. The cub opened its eyes and connected with hers. Gradually, it stood up and issued a deep purr. Emma mimicked the sound, and a profound connection was instantly formed between them. Transcending Verbal Communication the zookeepers and Dr. Kendall observed in amazement as the young girl and the young predator interacted, their connection surpassing the boundaries of their species. In those unique moments, a profound connection was formed between the young girl and the lion cub, all thanks to Emma's remarkable gift. As time went on, Emma's bond with the lions and other animals at the zoo grew stronger and more profound. With the guidance of committed zookeepers and scientists, she evolved into an outstanding advocate for animals and an expert in enrichment. Her exceptional skill in communicating and empathizing with big cats was unmatched. Emma's distinctive skills not only enhanced her life but also provided critical insights into the potential for human-animal communication and empathy. Emma dedicated her life to the rehabilitation of traumatized lions from abusive situations. With her calming vocalizations and soothing demeanor, she successfully integrated these majestic creatures into new prides. Time and again, her distinct gift was essential in mitigating aggression and nurturing profound connections among the lions. Today, Emma manages a prestigious animal sanctuary on her expansive, rural private reserve. She is devoted to advancing the field of interspecies communication, leveraging her natural abilities to markedly improve the lives of the animals she rescues. Emma's story beautifully illustrates the incredible outcomes that can arise when we embrace the wonders of nature with open hearts and minds. Her unique bond with animals highlights the profound connections possible between humans and the natural world. What are your thoughts on this inspiring story? Share it with your friends and drop a comment if you've ever experienced a remarkable animal encounter like Emma. Keep an eye out for more amazing stories coming your way soon.